اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session, we are going to revise or look into discriminant validity. Although I have had previous videos on that as well, but I have received some questions regarding discriminant validity. So I thought that let me explain it a bit further. Now here I have got a simple model with three, three predictors and one dependent variable. Now in order to get my discriminant validity results, what I am going to do is I am going to go to calculate. PLSSCM algorithm, path, standardized, default, all good, start. Now discriminant validity is assessed to establish the distinctiveness of constructs. Now in social sciences research, what happens is we've got constructs that may overlap each other. In order to make sure that those constructs are actually distinct from each other, we establish discriminant validity. Now to do so, what we are going to do is we are going to come here to discriminant validity. Now there are different methods to establish discriminant validity. One is HTMT that is based on the ratio of correlations. The other is Fornell and Locker where we use square root of AVE and compare it with the correlation of that construct with all the other constructs in the study. And then we've got cross-loading. Now first, let's look at HTMT. Now here, if we see, all these are green. Now what is the threshold? The threshold is 0.85. But it can go up, until, up to 0 0.90 as well, if you have the subdimensions or the constructs that can be highly correlated. So one can say that 0.85 is a more conservative measure of discriminant validity, 0.90 is a more liberal measure. Now, in this case, let's use 0.85, a more conservative measure. If you look here, all these ratios of correlations are less than 0.85. Hence, we can say these constructs are distinct from each other. And based on heterotrate monotrate ratio, we can say that discriminant validity is established. Now, I've been asked, where is the ratio of correlation between development and development OP? Why is this empty? Because these two are actually the same variables. So, the correlation is absolute 1. That's why there is no value here. So, this is a new criterion for establishing a discriminant validity and it is preferred that when using SCM, this criteria is reported. Now, the other more traditional criteria that is still uh, very much relevant and be, is being used is formal and locker criterion. So, I'm going to copy this to Excel and paste it here. Now, I'm going to bold and italicize these values on the diagonal. Now, this here is the square root of AVE for development. What is this square root of AVE? If you go here, construct reliability and validity. If you take the square root of 0.694, you will have this value is equal to SQRT 0 0.694.833. This is what we get here. Now, this value here, the square root of AVE should be greater than the correlation of that construct with all the other constructs in the study. So, where are the correlations of development with all the other constructs in the study? Here they are. So, you've got four variables, four constructs in the study and you've got three, three correlations here. Is this value higher than all these values? Yes. So, development is distinct from the other constructs in the study. Now, what about OP? This is the square root of AVE for OP. Is this square root greater than the correlation of OP with all the other constructs in the study? Yes, it is greater than reward and vision. But where is the comparison of OP with development? It's not here. It's here. Development and OP. So, this value is greater than this one and the values underneath. Similarly, for rewards. 
the value square root of a v for rewards is greater than its correlation with vision but what about its correlation with development on op it's on the left here look at this so you have to compare both at the on the left and at the bottom and finally for vision 0.884 is greater than its correlation with all the other constructs in the study hence discriminant validity based on Fornell and Locker criterion is established. Now finally, we've got cross-loadings, another method to establish discriminant validity. Now development, OP, rewards and vision, these are four constructs in the study. And each construct is measured using different items. Development is measured using seven items, OP is measured using five items, rewards is measured using four items and vision is measured using three items. Now, what are these numbers? These numbers are factor loadings, all these. Now, since development from 1 to 7, these are the items for development. So, what is this? This is the loading of development, that is the first item of development, DEV1, if the item loads with its parent construct or the theoretical construct that we have, that is development. So, its loading is 0.841. What if this item, development 1, was to load with other constructs in the study? Let's say OP. So, it load, its loading would decrease to 0.629. What if it was to load with rewards? Its loading would decrease to 0.484. What if it was to load with vision? Its loading would decrease to 0.558. This means that development 1 loads well onto its own construct in comparison to other constructs in the study. The same is the case with all the other items for development. Now let's consider OP. So will I select this one or this one? I'll select this one. Why? Because OP1, when loading onto its parent construct of OP, its loading is 0.783. What happens to its loading when it's when when it or when you want to load it with development? It loadings or its loading decreases to 0 0.530. Look at this here. So OP, the items for OP 1 to 5, they load well onto its own parent construct in comparison to the other constructs in the study. Although OP4 is loading well onto two constructs. But since we did establish based on Fornell and Locker criterion and HTMT, we are not going to touch it for now. Similarly for rewards, look at this. All four items are loading well onto its own construct in comparison to the other constructs in the study. And same goes for vision. Now based on this, the cross loadings and the assessment and analysis of cross-loading, uh, we can establish that these constructs are distinct from each other. So this is how you can use a smart PLS to establish discriminant validity. Thank you very much.